Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment, and today I wanted to do a demonstration for learning watercolors the very, very beginning. So this is for beginners or folks that are just looking to sort of boost their confidence and get more familiar with colors. Now, the set I'm using, this is a Winsor Newton Cotman. This is less than $20. Um, it fits really great in a Christmas stocking. I know a lot of people that are getting started. This is a fantastic set for color mixing and learning color theory because there is a warm, cool red. You have a warm, cool blue, a warm, cool yellow. You have a couple really nice browns. It's just a really, really nice set. You have white in here to make tints and learning blending. Um, if you start with a set, that's 48 or 60 colors. You're not going to need to learn blending as much. Figure out what your short-term goals are and how those can build and add up to a long-term goal. So the first thing I always recommend is folks make a swatch card. This is from some really nice 100% watercolor paper, but you can make a swatch card from any paper that you use. Now I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of water to activate my watercolors while I talk to you. And this will kind of soften up the pigments within the two pans. And I am doing cadmium red, uh, fair hue, and then the fallow blue. So whatever paper you decide that you want to start creating on, and maybe it's more of a student grade and it's wood pulp or partial um, cotton, Make a swatch card with that. Uh, Micron Black ink is waterproof. And really, with your swatches, see the darkest color you can make to the lightest color. And know that there's a range in there. And have this, like, at all times on hand with your set. So when you pull your set out, you have the swatch card. You kind of know what colors you can possibly make. Now, in the beginning, you're not going to know how much water to have on your brush. You're not going to know how much water to place down on the paper. This is what beginning and learning is all about. Remember that when you were learning to write and draw as a child, if you were learning it to write penmanship, it took years and years and years for you to figure out how to hold a pencil, how to make the pencil form the letters, how to make sure the letters were going the right way. So be really, really kind and patient to yourself. Um, <clears throat> I am using a four round. I really like this size brush for a five, but what's best is what what's preference to you. So maybe you prefer natural hair, this one's synthetic, or maybe you prefer a water brush. Start with what is attracting you the most to this medium and use that supply, practice with that supply. Now I tend to you have less water on my bristles just because I know there's water in my pans. So I'm going to take some of the water out and I'm just going to apply it to the page. I want to see how thin it can be, how thick it can be, how dark it can be, how light it can be. And I am just gently moving the pigment around on the page. Now this is wet pigment. And again, I am drawing very flat. If you choose to draw at an angle at an easel, there is going to be a different set of challenges with gravity. But know that there is still a little puddle of pigment, so there is still moisture on this page. If I then go to lift another color, there's going to be bloom. They are going to touch. There is going to be color mixing because of the amount of moisture. And this is what practicing in the very beginning looks like. How long do you wait for something to dry before you either paint up next to it or across it to try and achieve certain looks? Maybe you really like the wet on wet technique, so you have a big wet puddle, and then you want to add your pigment to the center and you want that to bloom out. Know that certain um, pigments and certain companies have bigger bloom. Core comes to mind. They have a huge bloom. 
Know that some pigments are gonna bloom more than others. Know that within a set, every pigment is gonna perform a little tiny bit differently within the set within the company. So some colors are gonna be a little bit more opaque. Some are gonna be more translucent. Some <clears throat> might be granulating, excuse me. And just practice, practice very gently touching little edges and seeing what different amounts of water do and waiting. Figure out waiting and touching and going, okay, that's still a little bit wet. Here's my fingerprint. What happens if I put more pigment on top of that now? And keep trying and keep creating because it's based on what style you want. So maybe you want your art to have patterns and designs and you want to write across it like a journal page or maybe you want everything to be one color one value and you don't want any splotching any blotching you want really crisp lines which means you're going to have wait time you're going to go and paint something else come back to this so this is perfectly dry before you do another overlapping heart with just a little blue showing through on one side this has to dry fully if you want crisp clean lines if you like splotches if you like the look of sort of creating things with different color with paler portions with darker portions if that's something that interests you practice that Practice that wet on wet, try wet on dry, try dry on dry, try um, wet on slightly wet. So understanding different levels of moisture on your brush, and understanding what that does. I am squeegeeing that out so I can get this as dry as possible. Now I have mixed my cadmium red with my phthalo blue. There's such a huge color range. When you learn to mix yourself, you begin to understand what certain colors look like, what certain colors you prefer. And from there, if this is a color you always use, maybe you then go and purchase a special tube of like burnt orange or something that this is, you know, similar to now. You wait for something to be pretty dry and you figure out if you can paint on that. This is what the practice does. The practice lets you know how long you have to wait. I mean, I suppose you could measure the amount of water onto your brush and have a timer set for how long you want things to dry. That is very um, calculated and mathematic. If that is how you choose to approach watercolor, then that is the correct approach for you if that makes you feel the most comfortable. I am um, very much more um, from the artist angle, and so I just kind of feel around, I kind of look at it. It dulls when it's drier, it has a sheen when it's wet, and I can kind of see that in my art when I go to create. The larger piece you have, the more you can move around and let portions dry before you go back and add things to them. It's just, it's in the very beginning, it's figuring out the water because the water element of watercolor is what makes this a unique medium to work with. Trying to control the water and the pigment and the drying time when creating or making texture. And know that when you create things like this, little swatch cards, little practice sheets, all this can be cut into bookmarks, gift tags, you can journal over it. None of this is a waste. Putting paint to paper is always creating, it is always doing your art, it is just figuring out how does this brush perform? Maybe I don't like how rigid this brush is and I want to try natural hair or maybe this brush is too floppy and I really want to try a water brush and figuring out how thin you can go with watercolor layers um, if you are plateauing with your art try a different size try you know adding more time if you have more time in your schedule I would level up the quality of the paper long before I level up a paintbrush so if you are on a tight budget or you're doing a no buy or a low buy, I would invest more in a higher percentage of cotton paper before I buy 
an expensive brush because there's tons of things you can do with budget brushes. And I will link some of my sketchbook tours to show you that you don't need an expensive brush to create things. And then understanding like lifting and trying to blend after something is almost dry. It's all these different techniques to kind of soften up edges, to maybe remove a portion, maybe you drop a thing of watercolor and you think you've ruined your painting, understanding that some of the stuff can be lifted, it can be removed. Um, you don't really wreck a watercolor. You can lean into it. You can add ink when it's dry. You can ink over it. You can gouache over it. You know, there's tons of things you can do, but this is just a practice sheet and you should practice, you know, five minutes a day, every day for 30 days. And it doesn't just build technique and practice. It builds creator confidence. And that is what will get you to sit down day after day and go, oh, I've got this. Oh, this is so much fun. Oh, I learned something else. Oh, this is how you layer. This is how you do wet on wet. This is very interesting. Oh, I like how this color performs in this pan. Oh, and that one seems semi-transparent. That's interesting. All this is the practice. This is what it looks like in the beginning. I hope this video helps. I will link some other YouTubers that have done beginning watercolor tutorials that I think are really beneficial. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day and I will talk to you later. Bye.